Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. All right, so uh, moving on, uh, we're going to do um, a wine, winery I've never heard of, which is not unusual. There's plenty of wineries out there I've never heard of. Um, but uh, uh, I forgot to mention, last show, wines are donated. All the wines are donated <laughs> for t today's episode and the next, like, three. All right, so these wines were sent to me... Um, I put down here from Mark Feinberg of Balzac Communications. Uh, the the, uh, the Frontera. They were sent to me by. Thought I put down here. Well, it should be right here. This one came via Jane Kettlewell. Kettlewell. I'm sorry. Ket Kettle. Sorry, Jane. Um, from Creative Palette. So uh, right. Yes. So she sent me those, and uh, so homeboy sent me these, Mark. Anyway, uh, Adler Fells. So this is a winery that um, it's been around for uh, quite a while, actually. They were founded in 1979 um, by David and Ann Coleman. Uh, so this is the Wikipedia entry, um, because you don't really find this on the actual website. Uh, the winery soon established itself as a producer of Sauvignon Blanc, Gewürztraminer, and Chardonnay from Sonoma County, with a particular emphasis on the Russian River Valley. Uh, they later expanded their sourcing to include varietals from Napa and other premier Appalachians from in California. 2004, the winery was purchased by the Adams Wine Group. Um, let's see, uh, they in 2008, so we're talking quite a while ago at this point. Um, sales volume 450,000 cases, uh, ranking as a 27th top winery in the U.S. by winebusiness.com. Among the labels produced by Adler Fells, so it's not just Adler Fells, it's, there's a whole umbrella. Um, and I have no idea these wineries are still in business, but I would assume they are. Coyote Creek, Coastline, Big Ass, and Leaping Lizard. Um, they also do, um... Private labels and uh, for like hotels, restaurants, retailers. So um, that's something to, to understand. You, you have it's, where I work, we have private label too. And a lot of places have private labels. Total Wine has a ton of private labels. Um, so this is a great way to get good quality wine without having the quote brand on it, but you're getting either the same juice or similar juice because a lot of times these private labels they take. Um, just the grapes and then the, whoever's in charge of it from that company that was creating the label, they give the winery direction and well, this is the style of wine we want or whatever. And they go and taste it and all that. So it's just a way to get, you know, good quality wine for without spending a whole lot of, you know, a whole lot of money, but you're still spending money on it. Believe me, it's not, it's not super cheap. Oh, excuse me. Anyway. So, um, blah, 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 blah. So let's get into this. So um, the uh, I'm going to read. Just going to kind of read from the from the thing here. Uh, from its perch, high on a crest in the Mayakamas Mountain, Adler Fells, which is German for Eagle Rock. Um, I'm assuming Adler is Eagle and Fells is Rock because it sounds correct. Um, has a perfect view of California's most famous vineyards from Sonoma to Napa and beyond. Um, I won't go through the rest of it. Uh, today, that vision lives on with our renowned winemakers Aaron Bader, or Batter, I'm going to say Bader probably, and Linda Trota. Uh, they continue the tradition of making superlative wines from top grape growers who have worked with the winery for as many as three generations. Um, I won't go through the whole thing here. Um, 
just because I am somewhat pressed for time. And you guys can read it also when you go to the website and check it out. Because uh, this is just a reprint of the website. Anyway, um, so we got two wines from them. And I'm really interested to check these out. Um, helps if I put them in the order, the sheets in the order of what we're going to try. The first one's a Chardonnay. Um, this is the 2015. Yes, 2015. Just making sure. Uh, 2015 Chardonnay, about half of it comes from, well, actually it says 50% from the Russian River Valley, 50% 50 50 from Monterey uh, County. Um, so equal amounts. Both these regions are regarded as having cool microclimates, making them ideal for growing Chardonnay. Uh, the rocky soil in the Russian River Valley and proximity to the ocean uh, in both sub-appellations creates even more ideal growing conditions for premium Chardonnay. Um, they talked about the 2015 vintage as being, um, was again, markedly early as in like harvest, but showing exceptional quality, um, unseasonably cool spring weather lowered the yields and contributed to smaller grape clusters. Um, for this wine, Linda, who's the winemaker, uh, carefully selected the best lots and then, uh, was able to craft this, uh, wine. So let's check this out. Ta da! Bam. All right. See little bubbles in there from the gas. A little, little cork particle there. All right, so let's see how it is. So a little, little smoky popcorn. Um, I have been maybe maybe my nose just wasn't picking up on this popcorn smell with Chardonnay, which is which is typical of many Chardonnays. Uh, maybe I picked it up early, early on in my drinking of wine, and then for some reason I ignored it, um, or maybe just the wine wines I've been drinking recently with Chardonnay just happened to be all that. But I mean, seem like I've been getting that that popcorn smell a little more often. You know, the burnt popcorn type of thing. Was there because there's the trains over there, and as I'm as I was breathing, I heard the dude, and I'm like, "Hey man, is that the glass or is that the train?" Anyway. Um, So you get that, and the burnt popcorn smell is really not a whole lot. It's just it's just kind of there, but it was the first thing I noticed. Um, so you still get you're getting some um, getting some apple and pear, but not a whole lot else. I got some peach now, a bit of peach. Not much else on the aroma. Let's see uh, see how it tastes. Definitely pretty tasty. Um, I forgot to tell you how much this, this is. Uh, this retails for $19.99. Suggested retail price. So um, I get more peach than anything else. A um, little bit of nectarine. Um, there is a little bit of the apple and pear, but not a whole lot of it. Um, it's really more dominated by these, those other uh, fruit flavors. So we get that popcornish um, uh, flavor to it. But that's really diminishing. Uh, cantaloupe. So some good fruit flavors off of this. Um, good acidity. Uh, I don't really get too much citrus as far as like lemon lime, but you know, there's good acidity to it. So mouth is watering a lot. Um, pH is 3.52, which means the lower, the more acid, right? Um, but I think it's, that's pretty much kind of in the middle point 
of, um, of wine. I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, I, I feel it's balanced. I feel it's um, well made. doesn't have that creamy, I mean, I don't feel like it's buttered popcorn, okay? I don't feel it's like all buttery and all and creamy. Um, it's definitely a, a more leanness to it, um, more my style of Chardonnay, but you can, but you can tell it's more of a modern, I'm not modern, but a newer world style. Um, it's enjoyable, absolutely. Again, a little, little chill on it, because this is, you know, normal room temperature. Get a little chill on it, help, help it out. It's got 14.4% alcohol, so we're definitely talking that medium plus, uh, almost high range. And um, I can tell there's a little bit of alcohol, but I mean, even at room temperature, it's not like I'm going, oh my God, it's horrible. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's fairly well contained. Again, you chill it, you're not going to probably notice any of the alcohol at all. Very nice, I like it. Says a lot, because Chardonnay and his Burgundian brother or sister or cousin or sibling, whatever you want to call it, aren't always my favorite wines. <clears throat> I, I like them, um, I just tend to gravitate towards other wines instead. Hey, eventually the next trip, well, I don't know if I'm gonna go there specifically, but my current thinking is my next actual international wine trip will be Burgundy because, well, you just kind of need to go. All right, so um, next wine, next wine. I like that wine though. You, if you see it, get it. All right, um, the Adler Fells, uh, Pinot Noir. Now this is 76% uh, from the Santa Rita Hills, 24% from the Russian River Valley. So let's kind of talk about that. Um, Sounds like pretty much the same thing. Okay, both Appalachians are well suited uh, to Pinot Noir production, which they are. Uh, influence from the Pacific Ocean provides cooling breezes and foggy mornings, and the rocky soils support healthy Pinot vines. Yeah, it's good. A good uh, summary of it. Uh, this one retails for twenty seven ninety nine. And Aaron is the winemaker on this one. Let's touch more, we're good to go. Actually, by the time this one's out, I'm, I've already been back from Dallas. <clears throat> Last episode should be while I'm in Dallas. And then, man, these are just getting harder and harder to pull out. Maybe I need a new, I wonder if I just need a new uh, needle. Because it feels like it's been that way for a while where I'm just having a hard time. Also exactly, you know, sitting down and trying to get the good, getting a good, um, Leverage isn't always the best, but I seem to remember these being a little bit easier to get in and out. And I've been toying with the idea of getting the faster pour needle anyway. All right, so good color. I like that. Uh, just, just a good normal Pinot color. Doesn't look like there's any Syrah in it <laughs> type of thing, you know. Doesn't look like any color was added to it or whatever. I can tell you right off the bat, nose-wise, I like this because with California Pinot Noirs in general, I'll get this kind of fake chemical somewhat smell to it. And I know this is, this is what it is, and it's not necessarily a fault or anything bad, but it has this like processed candy chemical smell. This does not have that. Matter of fact, my first thought on this would be this is most likely 
from Oregon or potentially, you know, a, a, a Burgundy that maybe has more modern or not modern, more Western or whatever, New World production or just a, a warmer vintage type of thing. But I don't think I would be mistaken for Burgundy, but I, I would, I, my first thought on a blind would be, this is possibly Oregon. So, which is my preferred style between the two states. But so by that, I mean, there's, there's, it seems like it leads with more of a non-fruit character first. Um, it's got some red fruit to it, um, but it definitely seems to be of, a, I want to call it smoky, but earthy, at least with an earthy uh, nose. But you can smell the fruit in there. I would actually argue it's probably more strawberry than cherry, which cherry is the usual um, fruit associated with Pinot. Definitely some spices in there. Um, the, the Christmas spice type of thing. Clove. Yeah. Clove, cinnamon, no type, that type of stuff. I like it. I like the nose. See, I, I don't hate Pinot Noir. So on the palate, um, everything's there like it should be. Um, it's not disjointed. It's very balanced. Um, it's not heavily tannic um, like it shouldn't be. Um, the flavors are coming through really nice. I got a little bit of like mint or spearmint on it at, at first. I think this is a really nice wine. Um, I think both wines are really good, but this one just kind of hits my flavor profile better. You know, um, I like it. Um, good red fruit. Um, again, it's, I'd say probably more strawberry than, than cherry. There's got a good tartness to it. It's not like this ripe, you know, juicy stuff. It's more of a tart flavor. Um, I totally could see this being in a blind going, I'm not sure if it's California or Oregon and just kind of in my head flipping a coin and saying, hey, I've called one and it's always it's the other and, you know, I mean, it's, it's more California than Oregon, but that's because I know what the answer is. But if I was blinding it, I could see myself wanting to take it to Oregon. And for 28 bucks, it's not overly priced. I think it's priced very well. Um, good quality. I think it's a good wine. If you see it, I think you should get it. If you like Pinot Noir and all that. Um, if, I, if I bought this off the shelf at the wine shop, I would not be disappointed for spending $28 for it. I'd be like, nice. Well, like the other day, I had a wine that I'd had before. I went to the store and I wanted to get some, I mean, wanted some wine that was drinking wine, not review wine. And I'd had this wine before, somewhat recently. It was 20 bucks. Got it home. Uh, actually drank one bottle of wine first. Got this other one. Opened it up and I was kind of like, not really sure about it. Smelled it like, ah. Uh. Now we're going to cross our fingers that all the junk I smelled was, was just junk and not faults. And yeah, it was bad. I took it back, got a refund. It was good. Anyway, but this wine, 28 bucks, I would not I would not have been disappointed if I had popped that open and, and dived into it. It would have been good. All right, so um, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, as always, click the friend, click the links above to friend me up. Hit the donate button over there. Send me some ducats. There'll be some uh, links to, uh, or at least a link, to um, the, the winery below. Thank you for stopping by and we'll see everyone again next time.